bit of routing I was doing on the banjo bull, this is a few days later from the last bit of uh, footage. This lad here I got custom made there in a local engineering shop. After buying two new ones of these, I realised that the treads just weren't good enough. So these treads are 5 8 UNF, so a fine tread. So my only option, because the treads were a bit chewed from before, right, was to go for an M16, so a 16mm tap ran it up there because this is that little bit wider it was able to grab the treads a bit better and this is an inch head and this is an 11 16 so it just all you know it just helped get a better grip on on the treads and this is a lot longer than this as well which doesn't really matter too much for the tvo tank because it's I think it's a lot a lot more gallons in there than the sink one gallon petrol so that means we can let that get up a bit anyway and i usually always keep a good bit of fuel in the tvo anyway so the dowdy washer just isn't working it looks like there was a bit of work done on these threads before and when i take this tap off you'll see that the amount of meat on the insert the brass insert that's threaded is just a lot less than this side here so that's why there was no harm going slightly bit wider there number one but also what that means is the doughty washer so if we look at our doughty washers here because the meat there's basically a wider kind of pipe there for tube for treads insert right this rubber lip here just doesn't really it's hard to get it lined up perfectly where it'll seal that is the issue, I think. So I've just, all I can do, because I've gone through everything I, I can, all my different fibre washers, plasticky rubber ones, this rubber one here, this is an old, this is the old uh, banjo that was in there. And as you can see, the treads on it weren't great. And I think they, you know, helped to destroy the treads that are in there. Because when I took this out the first time, it was all bits of brass kind of filings there. So this definitely destroyed the, the treads at one point and uh, yeah, that's what caused a lot of the damage. It's been harder than the brass. So I have one fitted on there. It's a kind of a pl rubbery plastic uh, washer. I'm hoping that might do the trick because when I put one of these on it and I say it, it pissed out of it straight away. I couldn't, I couldn't understand how it could piss. But I definitely need something wider. I definitely need something wider than this because what's happening is if that rubber isn't perfectly lined up with the bottom of the tank, right, the hole for the treads, if it's off to one side a little bit, it's just going to push down the ceiling area and it's going to create a little track for the fuel to come out. So I, I'm, I'm not being over fussy, but I'm just getting kind of sick of looking at, you know, fuel dribbling around here. It's like it used to seal. It used to seal very well. But then I think with vibrations and the fact that I didn't have it tightened that much when the doughty washers were on it, the beauty of the doughty is you just don't need, usually don't need that much of a tension on it to see. But I think because of that, the vibrations move things around a bit. I could never get it to seal again properly. So what I was doing was I was leaving it overnight and I was coming back and you'd always see, uh, you know, big drips in there and all of that. So I was like, you know what now, it's just, it's time to just get this, try and get it sorted. So I think my only option is to start looking at other types of washer. And there's a good chance this will actually let out a fair bit of fuel. So I'm just going to do a quick job. I'm going to tip out this petrol and I want to keep the kerosene separate. So I'll come back when I just get this emptied into the different petrol can. I'm just going to have this empty fuel can with the funnel in it ready here, just in case there's a big spillage. Because, as I said, this bolt is a lot longer, so it could just be allowing a lot more of fuel, we'll say, to sit below it, we'll say. Doesn't look too bad. I actually put my mouth around the, the filler up there and I blew, the, and I had to the bung out of the carb, so I kind of tried to blow as much as I could out. That said, there still could be a bit of a fuel in it. We'll just try and collect some just to stop it from running around. There's little tight patches on it there. I might just need 
the help of the spanner here. Now, having a bigger banjo does create problems because you don't have a great amount of uh, space in there with your spanner. And of course the rock recovery kind of stops you from tightening it the whole way around. It was a very good job made of this um, banjo, I think it's fair to say. This was all made in a lathe and stuff. A really good job. I, as I mentioned already, a little bit reluctant to go away from the original, but what can you do? And look, he tur even turned down the end of it here so you could get the filter, filter on, like really tasteful stuff, like. So very, really, I'm very happy with that. Anyway, needs must and all of that. So we'll take off this one here. This side here wasn't even that tight as you can see. And that's usually when everything is good in the hood, that's the only bit of tension you need to seal. It's mad. Whereas this side here, you know, there's a bit of a drip coming there. So we'll just catch that if we can. And just let it run out. Let's try and stop it running down the side of the tractor into the starter and all that. So I'll come back when that stops running. So I have the tap out of the way there. It's a bit of a sanding block here, so I'll just pull it nice and tight. I do like to try and uh, just hit it a bit of sand here because it is on level under there. There's a bit of soldering going on where they solder that insert in, and you can see the solder was a bit high in one side. And so that's the reason why this isn't sealing. So what I do is I just get my torch, and just give it a quick rub each time, hoping just to level it a bit. Just a bit. It's not going to take much. It's not bad. Even that should do. This is going to take a while to get sorted. But I definitely want to go the minimalist route here. Still fuel dripping everywhere. This is the nuisance of the whole thing, I'll be honest with you. Anyway, so we'll get our, we'll try another washer. So I'll go and get that quickly. And uh, we're going to try this kind of a rubber slash plastic one. This one here. That's all we can do is just try it. So where's my banjo is here. So we'll see does this fit. If it does, well and good. So yeah, it does. It's going to be a nice tight fit. So. Jesus Christ, there's actually a lot of fuel spilling there on the tractor. Anyway. Hopefully get this. We will get this sorted at some point. When it's sorted, it should be sorted. Oh, good lad. So it was sorted, but the treads just weren't the best. This is getting dangerous now. If I tighten this up and hit the solenoid there with a positive supply, we could have a, a fire on our hands fairly lively. So this is treading on nicely. Is the camera in focus there? It's treading on nicely, and that's kind of roughly what we want. We'll try it down a bit. I'll try and get this back down in one piece. Stop that petrol dripping everywhere. Should probably take taken off the battery. The battery lead. Well, that we'll keep. We'll keep it. We'll keep away from all of the fuel, the electrics. So we'll throw that up there. Make sure the filter stays on. Okay, I don't want that falling off, otherwise we'll have a bother trying to fish it out of the tank. We'll screw that up nice and easy first. Because of all those extra treads as well, we're getting a nice grip on the side as before. Oh, it was dodge. Very dodge. And this other side never leaks at all, and it's never even that tight. And it just goes to show how important it is to have the bottom of the tank level. I'm hoping with slowly finding the right sealing washer that we'll be able to get this sorted at some point. We will, unless it's leaking out around the solder, maybe. That could be an option, that could be what it is doing. I don't think it's doing that. I'm not sure there's ways and means around that if it is. Might just be a matter of heating it again with a, the torch, getting it to melt. It should, it should uh, 
seal. Well, I don't think it is. I think the inserts are put in well, it's just there was a bit of damage done in the past and it just whatever way I think just a bit unlevel and all of that. So all we can do is try the sealing washer. Looking up there now, do I think it's gonna work? I'd like it to be wider, and that's the problem with this and my copper washers that I've tried as well. They're just not wide enough. But look, we'll tighten it up. We'll, put, we'll give it a whirl. So I'm not going to over tighten this first. Let's make sure this side is snug. Okay. So now we'll get some white paper. Give that a wipe down, try and dry it. And we'll put some fuel in and repeat the whole process. Again, I don't know what kind of washer this is. This is something I picked up along the way. I threw it into the box. I don't have another one like it to say that it's going to work and it's going to solve the problem, or it's not. I don't know that I record fitting it one of them red fiber washers, but I put one of them on it not too long ago and it literally ran out of the bloody thing. That was a very definite no. Give it a good dry. Right, so I'm going to come back when I have a bit of fuel thrown in that and then we'll have a look and see if it's sorted. I don't know, can we see that there? You probably just see the colour of it there on top. Okay, it looks good so far. This other side there, that never seemed to give any bother. It was never need to be tightened that much. I have the fuel turned on there, filling up the carb, the petrol. And looking at this here, because I had kerosene on it last, I will have to drain it to start it, but that's okay. So usually what I do is, I just, it's in behind it that usually leaks, if I'm not mistaken. So what I do is I grab my mirror here, and I just have a quick look in behind there and see what are we looking like? Because I, I wasn't very hopeful to be honest with you because it's not wide enough. So far, basically it's just going to be a matter of flattening the bottom of that tank slowly. I think that's what's going to take to get this sealed. Flattening it slowly and then our sealing washer should eventually seal. Why it decided to seal all of a sudden? Well, I have an idea already how it has. These were never tight enough vibrations, I would say, going down the road a certain revs, got it to shimmy a little bit, moved that doughty washer, and that was all it took, and I could never get it back in the right place. I think that's probably what caused it. But so far, there's nothing visibly leaked in there, I don't think. Usually you see the shiny kind of petrol around. That said, it could be slowly weeping away there. It wouldn't surprise me at all. That it isn't as wide as I would like it to be. So I will most likely just leave it now for a couple of hours, and the next time I'm out and about, I'll come in and just usually all I did was rub my finger along there. And if you saw, saw the fuel, it was leaking, I tighten it up, and the next morning I come out, usually to find all drips hanging around there and coming down here and all of that. So it's a small issue, but at the same time, when I want to get sorted, this side is always dry as a bone. Dry as a bone. So we'll see. Do I think it's sealed? I don't. <laughs> you can see a bit of moisture in there already. And that's usually the way it starts. So I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to go tighten it. Take the minimalist approach. Um, that's the doughty that was in it there. Um, yeah, it's like it kind of shrinks a little bit and cracks with the petrol after a while. I don't know, are these meant to be used with petrol? I've used them on diesel, all right. They're on a lot of the diesel fittings on the furnace and diesel over there, and it was never a bother. I think petrol just, it eats that little, little bit more. A little bit harder on plastic and rubber, I think, you know. It shrinks it, dries it out, all of that. So. But, it's just one of them little things that we just going to try and experiment. I think it still is leaking. Yeah, 
that's me. It's fairly well dried there. So I'll just give it a little more of a nip. And that in itself will push any petrol out that was leaking. So we'll give it another dry and then every now and again we'll just check. I think that's rough, it'll turn off if you know in case it floods the car. I think that is basically going to be our approach from here. It's just going to be a quick little flattening and uh, all of that. And then repeat basically. So Hamid Harnash reached, we're back again. And uh, that last um, sealing washer was a kind of mix between um, rubber and plastic. It's, uh, it was still leaking. So um, I just wiped it half dry there and even though I emptied most of the fuel out of this, you still have a bit in from where the banjo bolt is going up through it. So it'll be a bit of a mess again. And that's unavoidable, I don't mind that. So I'm going to take that out because the last few evenings I left it, well, 24 hours I say, tightened up and uh, checked again each time, say each, the next day we'll say. And uh, it was always kind of running down along there and kind of starting to drip very slowly and all of that, but still uh, it's just something I want to get sorted. I do know that it is down to probably surface being a little level so every time I take it apart I just level a bit more so I've one more washer to try and that is this lad here so as you see there's kind of uh, grooves on it there I'm hoping this might actually seal and there's a little tab sticking out and that helps to tread it down so I don't really need them but they're no harm either so I'm going to try this washer now it's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit more flexible as well so I'm hoping that might just compress uh, a little more than the washer that is on this. So I've just remembered that I bought a work light. So I'm going to set that up because it'll give us a bit better visibility because I can't move that tractor forward now because I've drained all the fuel out of it. So we'll set that up and we'll see that we have a bit better light. Okay, so I'm just starting to take off this and so go ahead and get that much done. So you can see the old... Uh, Washer there on the top. That's good, we have our filter still intact. That's good. Take that off. Okay, so there we go. Just make sure the camera screen isn't rippling as it was before. That's okay, so it was starting to ripple there a minute ago. So, uh, that's okay. Ripple with the light for some reason. So to take off, the threads still aren't very good on this. I can see the brass filings on them. So I do have to be careful not to go over tightening on or anything like that. So pity this washer didn't work now, but sure look, that's we'll work it. We will eventually get there. Um, I might do a bit of flattening on that and I'm going to do a bit more flattening up there um, just trying to work out if that's fairly bad so I'm going to go get something just to check that for flatness so I think I'm going to take this off again altogether. I'm going to put this on sandpaper and try and just flatten it. I can see a bit of a dirty kind of a ring around it there, and I would prefer to see that um, shine, shine up because then at least I know uh, it's uh, flat. Take that on over and uh, we'll uh, do that on it as well and do a bit of flattening under there. and. I'll have that much done, so I'll come back when I have this on the sandpaper. I'm going to use this. Take off the brackets. Just try and flatten things a little bit better. Get a nice shiny surface on it. 
So underneath here, never really seemed to give any bother, in fairness. So I uh, don't know if we really have to go doing that, but uh, it never did leak. So that, that to me looks good anyway. It's good and uh, polish up. So I'm happy enough with that. So I'm going to go now and get my <coughs> sand and block and just do a bit more underneath the tank. So, <coughs> bit of the sand and block here with a sand paper on it. Same as before. Let's try and flatten things a bit. I'll pull it around good and tight, try and get it as flat as possible there. Give it a quick. It is sold, these inserts are soldered into place. Um, I might just bring the camera down over and have a look, show you what's going on. Maybe the work life would be good enough. Yeah, it is. So it's a bit messy. That's the side I'm trying to flatten. So it definitely was a bit high all around about there. So I'm hoping now that. I'm going to slowly get that flat. It definitely looks a good bit flatter, but it's so hard to work out if it's flat or not. You know, you can't really put anything on it because the solder's so <coughs> unlevel, you know, it's so... It's hard to work out. So anyway, we will get there. So we just need our angel bolt. And all of us just give them a quick wipe and make sure that there's no old filings and stuff. <laughs> That might stop it sealing. <laughs> so that's that. Let's go and get the other sealing washer now. And I'll bring the top part of the tap with me. I'll leave the glass bowl over the other side. Okay, cork seal is all right. So that was that. So that's there, and this I think screws on. I tried it on the old tap, and it kind of nearly treads on. Yeah, that's a nice tight fit. So that will slowly get that into place there. Okay, leave it a little bit loose because it'll have to tread its way down. Um, I think we'll just maybe we can get it into place. Yeah. Once it turns, yeah, that's okay. Um, still to blow now. Right. Okay. And then. Out the washer, so we'll make sure that he's. I just prefer from the camera, so I'll just check it every now and again to make sure it's still staying in focus. So. Let's pick the other one of them up. Okay, and this side never leaked. Touch wood, it won't start leaking. Gas, it, it needs so little pressure for this side to seal it. Make sure the rubber on the inside of that. Now he's good. That's roughly the way we're looking there now. These do kind of disintegrate after a while, and that's ideal when they want to seal first time. It's not ideal when you have to do what I'm doing here now. Anyway, no. Start up the left side first because are longer bankable all by hand first because I want to make sure I start on the right treads, treads are not perfect. 
bring it up level down to the other side and you can start treading that side down. So this is, I don't know how many different seal mosses I've tried on this one on the left now. Lost count. Copper, fibre, doughty, rubber, plastic, whatever you call this one. So the wool will be looking. So that's getting tight there. <coughs> By hand, I'm feeling it with the spanner. It's fine. I don't like over tightening any side of the point. I don't like tighten them even enough. Maybe they will help seal, maybe they won't. <coughs> it's definitely a lot wider anyway than Anton I've had on it yet. I did get the kit for this tap that has the cork seal behind that and it only gives you two red fibre washers for each side. And I found them utterly useless. So let's get the rest of the the tap up. Assembly. I'll just throw out the last bit. Fuel into the parts washer. There's a little bit of sediment in that, so we'll put on the bracket first. Next, tighten up a little bit. Try and keep it centralized. So, what I do is I'll tighten it, I just give it a little spin like that. It seems to do the trick. And then, lastly, put on the pipe at the back. So, then your 11 16 spanner. bent so I left it on the back axle of it. So I sent you these over there and lift it up a bit one time and uh, it. for this job that makes it ideal. So we give it a quick dry off so that we can see what it is going to be. some fuel into it. I'll have to back when I have some fuel into it. I have to put the little stopper in the carb there, the, the drain plug. Okay, so I'm throwing the petrol back in. It's light colour of kerosene off there actually. Strange unless that was from something from the drain and a bit of the other tank into it. I didn't think there was much in it. Let's try and get all this dried off and be able to Oh, doesn't seem to be leaking. Pipe out the back, seems to be dry. Oh, I'll just check the tension on that. that again for a certain amount of time and we'll come back and see is that washer finally going to do the trick that's what we want to find out and if it does happy days if not a bit more flattening and I'll try a different one but I'm actually running out of what else I can 
used, you know, but yeah, I'm running out of options, I think, here. It's just going to be a matter of having to try and flatten the bottom of that tank and I hope that I haven't actually sanded away too much of the solder and it's actually leaking through the solder. Um, that's another issue that I would hope isn't happening. So, I know with the other washers you would actually see it starting to get wet around it, so maybe that'll do it. Yeah, that side was always good. So that'll be it. Going on a little bit about this, I suppose. Um, but I'm sure people are running into the same issue. I wouldn't mind if you could buy these tanks new. You can't. Um, so I have to work what I have. I did use the tank sealer on it. It's important to keep the petrol tank separate from the TVO tank. Otherwise, you'll have to run this engine in petrol the whole time. And it's just not designed to do that. So it's worth trying to salvage this, keep it uh, useful. And uh, yeah, we will come back. I'll report back when I have a little bit more to show. We'll see how this sealing washer works. And uh, yep, so the next time, hopefully, that is going to have sorted.